I'm also got all the information programmed now into ChatGPT concerning ICE decides to open a store. All right, and in that store they want to sell alcohol and cigarettes. I love the way they phrase this shit. The plaintiffs do not come close to meeting the Federal Civil Procedures 8A2 standard or presenting a short and plain statement. Remember I showed y'all the Campbell's chicken soup can? All right, let's use this as an example of their argument. This is your whistleblower. Wow. Look at the picture. Right. First off, she is a woman. How much time do you think you spent doing it? To give you a high level, it took months. Frequency trading techniques. He's got only 50 million shares. Oh, and he's not a boot. She held the hammer for right here. And I was not a shirt to the man. I think he's going to have a shirt. After I had done my live stream on the Jordan Affolter and Al from Boston lawsuit against numerous parties about their legal fan fiction masquerading as a lawsuit, I had expected a response from CSI on these matters. What I hadn't expected was a seven video clickbait screed over four days while I was dealing with the Sorrento case and my following research dealing with that. Now, I had always intended to append my cursory overview of the motion to dismiss by the New York Stock Exchange that I had given in that live stream with a video that went over it more fully. So it's just as well that CSI decided to pen all these videos so I can knock them all out one by one in a single video, something that he still hasn't figured out how to do. We'll get to those videos in a second, but first, I wanted to deal with more directly the motion to dismiss by the New York Stock Exchange itself before getting into those videos. First, the New York Stock Exchange points out that it's a self-regulatory organization. Now, for those of you that have been following since I was covering the MMTLP cases, you know that this came up as well during the MMTLP lawsuits against FINRA, and it was the same series of arguments with the same case precedent that was used against MMTLP lawsuit creators. Heck, even in one instance, the New York Stock Exchange uses a citation from one of those very lawsuits. It's a perfect circle, the meme stock world. Second, they point out that regulation show is the sole prerogative of the SEC, and they also bring up billings that conflicting federal statutes preclude private claims and require the authority of the SEC or an actual federal body to enforce. Lastly, the New York Stock Exchange points out that the plaintiffs don't even come close to meeting the Federal Rules for Civil Procedures Code 8A2 and that this case should be dismissed under Code Rule 12B6, which is failure to state a claim. First, let's deal with the New York Stock Exchange's claims under Rules of Civil Procedure 8A2 and the natural progression to Rule 12B6. The legal standard is a complaint must contain a short and plain statement of the claim showing that the pleader is entitled to relief. Each allegation must be simple, concise, and direct. Dismissal for non-compliance with Rule 8 is appropriate where a complaint is so confused, ambiguous, vague, or otherwise unintelligible that its true substance, if any, is well disguised and so prolex, redundant, and unintelligible that it would be unreasonable to expect defendants to frame a response to it. Complaints which ramble, which needlessly speculate, accuse and condemn, and which contain circuitous diatribes are removed from the heart of the claim. Under Rule 12b-6, claims must be plausible on their face, citing Ashcroft v. Iqbald. Hmm. I remember bringing that up at one point. Case. 
we have to look at standing Supreme Court precedent when it comes to forming a complaint to survive a motion to dismiss, because that is in all likelihood what is coming down the pipe when the response comes. There are two Supreme Court precedents that cover this area, Twimbley and Iqbal. Both lay out that merely putting together an argument that could logically be put forward is not enough to survive a motion to dismiss. Making an argument that is simply conclusory, in other words, the argument has no support. It simply assumes it is correct in and of itself is not enough to survive a motion to dismiss, which is going to be... Hmm, about that. Anyway, the New York Stock Exchange then goes on to point out that dismissal with prejudice is warranted because even if Al and Jordan amended their complaint, it wouldn't change anything because the heart of their arguments is fallacious to begin with. Next, the New York Stock Exchange brings up its SRO immunity, which as I pointed out, I've gone over dealing with FINRA and the MMTLP lawsuits, but we'll go over it again really quickly here. The cases that are cited by the New York Stock Exchange are NRE, New York Stock Exchange Specialist Security Litigation, Gallagher v. FINRA, NRE Series 7 Broker Qualification Exam Scoring Litigation, and Sparta Surgical. They bring up in the New York Stock Exchange specialist case specifically, the power to exercise regulatory authority necessarily includes the power to take no affirmative action. After all, the purpose of immunity is to give governmental officials or those acting with the express delegation of the government breathing room to exercise their power without fear that their discretionary decisions may endear endless litigation. Courts thus have declined to craft exceptions for bad faith, negligence, or even gross negligence, citing the Series 7 exam. Whether an SRO is for profit or not does not matter. Whether the specific challenged acts and forbearances were incident to the exercise of regulatory power, whereas the propriety of those actions or inactions and the SRO's motives are irrelevant. Again, in New York Stock Exchange specialists, even where the challenged conduct was motivated by a wrongful motive or even malice, immunity applies. All of this is because all SROs are already government-regulated entities, specifically by the SEC in this case. And the SEC has the same sort of regulatory immunity that the SROs would have. That means the SEC's actions or lack of action is likewise immune. Tuck that one into your back pocket for later. Even if we took the SRO immunity out of the picture for their RICO charges, they don't meet the pleading standards for a RICO charge. They didn't present any facts or evidence or plead the elements of a RICO claim. And even if they did under billings, that would be the prerogative of the federal government because of the conflicting claims. Not to mention that there's already laws on the books that securities claims are directly exempt from RICO charges. And lastly, the cherry on top of it all is that these claims can't even be brought to begin with. If they are going to accuse the New York Stock Exchange of some sort of fiduciary duty, there needs to be a fiduciary relationship, something that I also discussed in the MMTLP cases, which also doesn't exist here, and the New York Stock Exchange aptly points that out. There are specific rules in law and case precedent determining what constitutes a fiduciary duty, and both parties have to be aware of there being a fiduciary relationship for it to be counted as a matter of law. And that pretty well covers the New York Stock Exchange's motion to dismiss. So what about CSI's videos dealing with this motion to dismiss? Well, much like the plaintiffs in this case, CSI tries to simultaneously fire off a shotgun dealing with his personally cherry-picked facts, selecting carefully which facts that he likes while excluding the ones that would damage his argument the most. So any complaint that Al from Boston and Jordan have, they're saying take it up with the SEC. All right, 
But then I got to thinking about it. They, there's no way that they could give themselves blanket immunity. The company owns the New York Stock Exchange. So when you say the New York Stock Exchange is the defendant, then you would be saying that the parent company, which is ICE, had a fiduciary duty to oversee that the New York Stock Exchange was being ran properly because it's part of their company. You cannot rely on, how did they say it in all the rest of these videos, uh, negligence is not malice. To this specific video, they didn't give themselves blanket immunity. The government gave them blanket immunity for anything related to their specifically granted SRO powers. In the case of the New York Stock Exchange, the operation of the exchange. And they don't owe any fiduciary duty as we've already gone over. There is no relationship or fiduciary relationship between even ICE and normal traders because they trade through brokers. All retail investors do. So again, that argument doesn't fly. More importantly, there is no end around going past the New York Stock Exchange to ICE as he brings up in this video. ICE would have had to apply. They are the parent company. Another argument that he caught me using on Twitter and then malformed because he doesn't have the IQ score required to understand the argument. And as to this whole negligence isn't malice thing that he constantly brings up and doesn't understand, that is the specific pleading standards for fraud under federal law. You require to prove sinister. Sinester is a willful, knowing intent to deceive. So yes, negligence isn't malice, and you haven't proven malice at any point in time. Now, you see the parallel I drew here, people? It's as if this man that owns this store would be selling cigarettes and beer to a minor. Now, it's governed by the ATF, but they didn't enforce the rule. Law enforcement, law enforcement has to get involved, and they go and arrest the clerks that are guilty of selling cigarettes and beer to minors, and the store wants to say, oh, but ATF regulates us. No, nah, fuck that. ATF was not enforcing the rule. They had to call in law enforcement to stop the clerks from allowing cigarettes and alcohol to be sold to minors. Who's ultimately responsible? All right, let's 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 get this out of the way in the first place in his little LARP pretending that him and Al and all these apes, meme stock morons are the cops. You aren't the fucking police. All right, let's get that cleared out, out of the way right from the start. You are not the cops. Second of all, ICE would be ATF in this example because it's regulating the trading of securities on its exchange. And the SEC would be the cops. See, this is how absolutely stupid and how easy it is to completely obliterate a seven-minute video that this moron puts together in under a minute. It is that stupid. This is the exact reason SRO immunity was granted, so that your little vigilante brigades would never see the light of day in court for your bullshit lawsuits. So your little lynch mob can go walk on back home. And remember that point that I brought up that both the SEC and the New York Stock Exchange are specifically immune from their lack of action? Well, this would be the time to use it because those specific procedures are the reason that this lynch mob doesn't get to do anything. It has no power here and a court has no reason to grant a lynch mob their day in court just because they're aggrieved because they're fucking idiots. Me and Chat GPT says, all right, plaintiffs contend that their complaint clearly demonstrates that several different market manipulation tactics were used by many of the New York Stock Exchange's elite customer base. It is not the plaintiff's fault that the defendant's high-profile clients were involved in so many numerous violations that it does not fit into their idea of a short and plain statement. 
That's not what they meant when they were in reference to the short and plain statement. I realized when you were cherry picking a specific argument to point out that you were intentionally withholding the context. They go into great detail talking about the musings that are purely theoretical with no factual basis that go nowhere that Al made. That's what they mean by it was not a short and concise argument or pleading. They never got around to the facts and they posed multitudinous hypothetical situations instead of making a straight forward argument with facts and evidence. Again, that only took a minute to deal with. The argument stands any ground because remember I showed y'all the Campbell's chicken soup can. All right, let's use this as an example of their argument. I went to Walmart and I bought this can of chunky Campbell's chunky soup. All right. And come to find out this can particularly is infested with some type of virus that can make me sick and send me to the hospital, all right? And I do get sick. Thousands of people get sick. Why? Because somewhere along the line in the chunky, uh, Campbell's chunky uh, production of this, it got contaminated and thousands of people got sick, all right? Now, the question is, do I sue Walmart or do I sue Campbell's Soup? Because they sold this can and never recalled it and thousands of people got sick. So who do I sue? Do I go after Walmart for selling it to me? Or do I go after Campbell's for making this product, all right, that made me sick? Because the New York Stock Exchange's argument is just like that. They're saying, hey, look, we're Campbell's soup, all right? And we don't interact with CSI to buy this can. God, this argument is so stupid, but thank the heavens it's the last one. I know the obvious argument that he wants me to draw the conclusions from is that, yes, you would sue Campbell's Soup. But here's the thing. The New York Stock Exchange is not Campbell's Soup, as he attempts to argue. The New York Stock Exchange is Walmart. It's so simple and so easy. The New York Stock Exchange did not create the securities that were sold on its exchange. They did not create the company. They did not securitize the assets and ownership of that company and the cash flows of that company. They are simply the store shelf that you bought the Campbell's soup on. The fact that he can't even form a proper analogy for the situation shows that he has no business trying to educate others on YouTube about a concept that he can't even grasp himself. It is the blind leading the blind. And that pretty much sums up everything. That's it for now. I'll catch you guys later.